Welcome back to another episode of Plant Based Ads. I'm Joey. I'm Tim. Uh, so it is the new year, finally, 2024. This is a big year for us. Here's everything that's happening this year, right? I'm going to be 60. <laughs> You're going to be 55. Lex is graduating high school and moving away. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, starting school. Starting college. Uh, and it is our tw going to be our 20 year anniversary. Wow. That is a lot going on, like in one year, all in 2024. So uh, let's hope for and wish for a good year, right? Yeah. Uh, so today, with it being a new year, I thought it would be a really good time to talk about uh, if you're thinking about, I hate resolutions, right? Like, do you do, yeah. you do resolutions? I used to, but I feel like we're onto something now. Like, I don't have anything yeah. for this new year. I think, I, sometimes it's a uh, you can take a moment to pause and think about some reflection. pivoting, yeah. yeah, reflection. I guess I, I feel like the reason I don't like resolutions is because people like do something like I'm gonna you know quit smoking this year, right? And then January first they try and stop, and by the fifth or sixth they fail, right? Versus uh, instead of making a resolution, maybe coming up with a plan on how to do you know, how to do it correctly, right? So that's kind of what I, we want to talk about today. Uh, we want to talk about, you know, what are some ways you could start looking toward making changes in your life to work toward maybe more of an unprocessed food uh, diet, right? Correct. I think statistically, you're right. Having a plan is much better than pivoting 180, totally changing. However, I have known people that that has worked. But more often than not, that does not work. And yeah. so that's kind of what this is about. And I've been wanting to do this like all year, just waiting for New Year's to get here. We're going to give you 10 tips on what you can do now or how you can start transitioning to a unprocessed uh, life, right? All right. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right. Uh, let's start with one, number one. So uh, I'll do like some topics and we, we, you can come up with what you think, all right? All right. Make small changes. Just pick one thing to change. Like, hey, I'm just gonna, this week, I'm just gonna eat breakfast uh, like oatmeal. I'm gonna make five oatmeal. It's Sunday night. I'm gonna make five oatmeal and I'm gonna, you know, have them for breakfast every day and I'll take them with me and I'm not gonna worry about the other meals. I'll eat what I normally eat, right? I'll stop and get something on the way home or whatever, but just one meal, I'm gonna make breakfast. What do you think about that? Life happens, and having those ready to go mm -hmm. or a base yeah. is great. Yeah, yeah, because if you wake, if you go to bed Sunday night, going okay, tomorrow I'm gonna put something together for breakfast, and I'm gonna take it with me, right? And then tomorrow gets here, somehow somebody called in the middle of the night, and something was wrong, and now you had to do something, and now you have to go to work at seven a.m. You don't even have time to shower, and your kids got a, and you don't have time to put oats together, right? <clears throat> so having it made the night before or for the week is a plan to succeed, don't you think? Yeah. So I think, or we think that if you can just make, just in your mind say, you know, I'd like to make one change. I'm just going to change one thing this week. And let's say you're successful all week, right? You're like, wow, I've had breakfast at work all week with something I bought along. Oh, it was really good. Maybe I want to like make breakfast and lunch next week, right? Or next month, right? But set set smaller goals that you can attain. This is why resolutions don't work because it's one big goal and then you don't get it and then you're like, screw it, I'm never gonna get to that, it's over, right? But don't you think if you have little victories, you'd be like, oh, I just had a little victory. Maybe I could keep going, let's see what happens next. Don't you think? <laughs> yeah, so that's our tip number one, make small changes, right? For the next 30 days, uh, make one small change. Number two, uh, something we do all the time uh, is meal prep on the weekends, right? And that helps you and I both, right? Yeah, we, I mean, the, we get a chance to make things that we want. Um, if things are tempting at work or they provide meals, uh, to have what I want. So if I have bolognese sauce, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm choosing this over something else. Um, it, that's so much better than the same sandwich all the time. So by meal prepping, I can control what I'm going to have or the variety for the week. So it's nice. Your work is different than mine because where you work, there's a full out cafeteria with them, with people serving you and all that. It's literally a food court, right? Uh, and nothing there is healthy, but yeah. So for me, the meal prep, um, being able to choose what I want in a healthier version, knowing that, or that it's fresh or it's organic, um, I'm not tempted by 
anything they offer. Yeah, I, for me it's different. I'm a teacher. There's nothing. There's nothing waiting for me where someone's cooking something. You don't have right? food. You don't yeah. eat. Yeah. yeah, right. If okay. I don't bring my food, I'm not eating. Right. Yeah. Like that's just it. We both have different challenges. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I have to bring food no matter what. With me though, there's always like a dessert somewhere. Oh, I bought it. You know, a dozen donuts, whatever. And two are vegan. Or well, we got a box of vegan ones too. Now, and being the only yeah. vegan, I feel like well, now I'm gonna eat this whole box. Otherwise, they've wasted their money. They're not buying them again. But right? meal prepping, we've yeah. entered in chronometer the weight or the portion, so I know exactly what I'm getting. And then that's my plan for the day. And if I mess that up, then it's going to hurt me later that night or something. So having a plan, having yeah. something pre-made, it just simplifies life. And so when we say meal, meal prepping, we're talking about on Sunday nights, we're making meals for the week. And we're not necessarily putting them. I mean, people do like put, here's my lunch for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and they've laid them all out. I'm talking more about, I've cooked a bunch of potatoes, so they're ready to go. So in the morning, I could pick a potato already cooked, right? Yeah. And squash, already cooked, put it together, I'm out of here. Or I could do it the night before. But you could lay out all your meals like people do on the, uh, the influencers. That might get tiring after the third day of the same thing. So by just having potatoes ready, just cook potatoes, right? I could, you know, have a hash one day. Right. I could have potatoes with cheese sauce the next. Like I could just have different meals. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Same with the bolognese sauce. Am I having this over a piece of sourdough bread or if I'm having it over edamame or yeah. chickpea pasta or something? Yeah. Um, that Things like that, that flexibility. So we're talking about just making some prep ingredient cooked and ready to go. So really, yeah. uh, you know, like, make some base items. Yeah, like quinoa, we noticed. Yeah. I'm not sure I make or the patience for that at night, but if I already have it made in the fridge, yeah. I can add it to a bowl or even a salad. under sauce or over the salad. Yeah, you, get a salad. you can get a salad for work with no dressing, right? Yeah. Bring your own dressing at the cafeteria, throw on the quinoa. Yeah. Right? Pinto beans is another idea. Yeah. We have a, a ranch that we make and we add some chipotle to it, and all of a sudden we've got a spicy salad with some warm beans that works, and that works for Lex, it works for you as well. So we do that, we make our, our and greet our base foods for the week and we stick them right in the front of the refrigerator on glass jars right up front so when we open the fridge it's the first thing we see if we're getting any snacky or whatever when we're home we're like oh look i've got this i've got to eat this right um so i mean that's one way to do it for sure uh, tip number three one of the things <laughs> you ever watch like the youtube influencers and uh, influencers and they're making a meal it doesn't matter what it is the very first thing is they take their pot out the frying pan and what's the next thing they put in it? Usually olive oil. Olive oil. Oh, we're gonna start with about some olive oil and like two or three tablespoons, a quarter of a cup, right? And then they make the stuff and we're gonna top it with some olive oil and, and I, whoa! Like, stop ingesting oil. Uh, you often don't need oil to cook. We have hundreds of 270 mm. videos. We've never used olive oil in any of those to cook, right? We saute with water. Now, uh, you know, if you're using sesame seed oil in, a, in an Asian dish for the flavor, that's a different story. But you don't need to cook with olive oil. You don't need to top things with olive oil. Olive oil is, is I mean, it's an oil. All the oils are 400 calories per pound. They're the highest calorie, most di calorie dense food on the planet. If yeah. you're trying to live on process or lose weight, oil's gotta go. Yeah, I mean like the tahini that we, or the, the hummus that we make is awesome, but so many times you see that with added olive yeah, oil, and right then they top. drizzle on top yeah. as well. So it's times two plus the tahini, like, so they've made a good dish bad, um, yeah, just historically speaking, but. The hummus that we make or the hummus recipe, it's got the tahini in and everything else. It leaves the olive oil out. When you, I mean, that does, when you, when I eat that, I don't ever think, wow, where's the oil? Yeah. Like, I don't think of that at all. It's just delicious, right? Yeah. So oftentimes, you can leave the oil out. Many times we'll see a recipe online and we'll be like, let's make this, but let's just leave the oil out, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, sometimes it doesn't work, right? Uh, I, I get that sometimes it emulsifies yeah. or it it's, it's makes something more smooth. Like but, a salad dressing. But again, right? it's just yeah. not worth it. No, um, no. I, I've noticed that just from a health perspective, if you logically think about olive or just oil in general and how fast it's absorbed and the amount of calories per pound, it's yeah. one of the highest caloric things you could eat per pound but yeah. um if you think about that uptake and i don't know and then for me i can have digestive issues oh, if yeah. i have something deep fried all of yeah. a sudden i have reflux or yeah. my stomach hurts and in life my stomach doesn't hurt my, my digestive system doesn't work or it doesn't hurt um we take prebiotics you know we're taking we're having green bananas sometimes for postbiotics but we have all that stuff in uh, in place but oil, for some reason, the deep frying or something will will cause reflux. So for me, it's 
it's a health choice as well. Like, There's all those pictures on the internet where it shows you like if you eat uh, you know, a bunch of like broccoli, right? It yeah. takes up your, like a hundred calories of broccoli takes up your whole stomach, yeah. but a hundred calories of oil, right? Is this tiny little thing, yeah. like it's a little puddle. Yeah. So oil does, it takes up so little space, right? But it has so many calories for it. So leave yeah. the oil out if you can look into not using oil. And when you're buying stuff, like if we're buying protein mix or whatever, so much of that stuff has oil in it and it's not necessary. Yeah. We so, found one that does not. So that's possible. Yeah. But so try and read the labels. Make sure you're not getting something with oil in it. A lot of times we'll buy vegetables at Costco, right? And we'll be like, oh, look, they've got Brussels fire sprouts, roasted. fire roasted Brussels sprouts in the bag, ready to go. And you look at it and the ingredients are Brussels sprouts and oil, right? And I'm like, no, no, I don't, this is coat. And then you can tell because there's a bunch of fat in it. And Brussels sprouts don't have enough fat to make a difference. So where's the fat coming from? Well, but there are alternatives, so it yeah. works out. But but yeah, you have to look at everything. And sometimes I make a mistake and Joey's like, did you look at this? Yeah, let's label it. And I can assume it. sometimes it's not, and then there is. Yeah, so. so if it's possible, get off of oil. Oil is the biggest uh, food for calories on the planet. There's nothing more calorie dense than oil. And it doesn't matter, like people are like, well, olive oil is a healthy oil versus, you know, uh, canola oil is not. True, right? But they both have the same amount of calories. Yeah. If you're trying to lose weight, it doesn't matter what oil it is. They still have 400 calories per pound. It's yeah. the same. All right. Now, number four, tip number four, get salad dressings out of your house. Right. And here's why I say that, because uh, you could stop. There's a, there's a salad restaurant here, a salad to go place called Salad and Go. You drive by and they give you your salad and it's really nice. And then you have a packet of dressing. Right. And you can get like tofu on it, beans and all that. And all of it's great, except that dressing packet is just loaded with fat and calories, right? So sometimes I'll just go and stop and get the salad. There's nothing, else, there's no dressing on it. And I'll bring it home and I'll just make my own salad dressing when I get home. So get salad dressings out of your house. They're loaded with oil. They're loaded with things that are not good for you. All of your calories in a salad come from the dressing. Because lettuce has got, I mean, you can do two full cups of lettuce packed for like 20 calories, yeah. right? And and I think we have used an Italian dressing that did, was oil free in a bottle, but I looked, you know, and it's got gums in there that yeah. you don't want. Um, so it's just not a good choice, but but you have to get down your arsenal of dressings. Oh yeah, those, those so salad dressings are overly processed and loaded with oil. Make your own dressing. One of the things we do all the time with uh, salads is I take a, um, a tablespoon or one part maple syrup and a tablespoon or one part Dijon mustard, mix those together. I get like a vegan honey mustard dressing and it's delicious, right? And it's just maple syrup and, and mustard. Yeah, we also have lemons ready to go and then uh, the lemon rind. Um, yeah. And sometimes that works, but. I could pour lemon juice on a salad or a squeeze lemon and sprinkle some pepper and I'm good to go, yeah. right? Like just get rid of salad dressing. You're eating something healthy and then you're just destroying the benefits by, by having dressing on yeah. it. Tip number five, when you're making a meal, have low calorie vegetables with every meal and load that meal up. We talk about this a lot on this channel. If you're gonna have like, you know, uh, some potato, right? Well, have a, a, a little amount of potato, right? Like enough to give you about 300 calories. And then uh, load that plate up with broccoli or Brussels sprouts or summer squash or whatever, and you'll have a huge plate of food. You won't even be able to finish it all. So since July, I think we've made a big push to show a large portion of food. And basically it's at loading it with vegetables. That's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we're it just works. taking stuff that's higher calorie uh, like the starches, right? Like potatoes and uh, corn and all that, making that the center of the plate and then loading it up with as many uh, uh, unsalted vegetables. And that will fill you up, right? For a lot less calories. And it's, you know, it'll give you an unprocessed meal. So try, and when we say vegetables, we're not talking about like, you know, broccoli with butter on it and all that. We're talking about just steamed broccoli, uh, you know, Brussels sprouts with some seasonings on it, right? Yeah, there's some seasonings. Yeah. I think we showed a, a stir fry with a couple ingredients. Yeah, um, we have a lot of recipes in this stuff. That sort of thing, yeah. oil-free again, Yeah, but bringing in that flavor to... The idea is not to, to use stuff that's processed, but just going to the store, buying some produce and making your own stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you don't know how to do it, you just look online. There's so many uh, easy recipes. All right. So number six, here's something I had to learn this year. And that is get your metabolism checked because if your metabolism is low, like I've, I've limited my calories. I've eaten just starches. Like I've done everything and weight did not fall off. And finally we had my metabolism checked and realized my metabolism is really low. 
my BMR is like 1200 so or 1300 it's pretty low so for me like if I'm eating 1700 worth 1700 calories worth of potatoes and healthy foods right even if I'm eating healthy foods I'm gaining weight like yeah. that's it yeah I think my, the message here too is not to give up like if you've gone this route you're getting healthy um but then if you're having a little bit of trouble there might be something more wrong like yes so you're over calculating or something and interesting because I, I went to the gym recently and they put me in a machine where they scan you and they tell you everything you ever want to know about yourself and my my bmr came up really low for them too and they were like wow you have a low bmr i'm like yeah i already know right yeah in july we experienced this as well on the kind cruise, of a wake-up yeah. call yeah so happy metabolism check maybe if you are having problems with weight that you're actually just eating too many calories and that was that was wrong with me right and now that i know that i'm able to manage that i'm still even eating filling plate but i just know that there's a number that i really don't want to cross right so uh check that for sure uh number seven get rid of the all or nothing mindset so and this happens every every new year's right people are like i'm gonna quit smoking and then they on january 1st they they didn't smoke and the second they didn't smoke on the third they're really craving a cigarette on the fourth like they have one and they have one cigarette and they're like, it's over, I'm going back, right? I can't do it, I can't do this, this is too hard, right? So you have to you have to let that go. You have to be like, oh, look, I fell, I did this and I knew know that I shouldn't have. What can I do? I'm just gonna get back up, keep going and what can I do differently next time to make sure that happens? Smoking is really hard to do that because that's an addiction. But like, you know, if you're talking about with sweets, right? Uh, look, it's three o'clock and I'm starving, so I just stopped and got a candy bar. Yeah. Well, why? Okay, well, you got a candy bar. Your diet's not over, right? <laughs> Pick it up at dinner, have an unprocessed dinner, and move on. But why did you have a candy bar? Well, probably because you were hungry, right? Yeah, it's true. I think, or what's the trigger during that time? Yeah. Like, is three o'clock your, you need a snack, yeah. so you got to plan for that. Yeah. Um, but don't give up. No. I mean, this definitely is the road less traveled but we ourselves are ultimately responsible for our own health, right? Yeah. So when we leave the house, like the it's stacked against us because of consumerism or, you know, yeah. people wanting to make money or profits sure. and convenience. So like, it's not set up for your success no. out there, but it's not to also say like, this is too hard or it's impossible. It's like, no, you need to make it possible. Yeah. Like, um, so I think that leads us into our next thing, surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Yes, um, with like-minded people, yes, because you, I mean, newsflash, you can't do this alone. Well, right? I mean, you possibly can't, but you don't need but to. What, you don't need to. No, you yeah. got, I mean, especially with social media, you, are sur you can surround yourself with people doing the same thing you are, no matter what you're doing. You're talking about living unprocessed. There's so many groups that you can join. Sometimes I feel stuck and I'll go to the, the Facebook group and all of a sudden there's pictures after pictures of things that people have done or, yeah. hey, yeah. this worked or this didn't or... Uh, Troxel, I took your recipe, but I added this. And I'm like, that's a good idea. Yeah. So like, that's one tool, right? Yep, yep for sure. Um, you can have, I don't know, more than, you can have our YouTube channel go through, there's 200 recipes or 160. Yeah. Like just the pictures alone sometimes can motivate you. So I don't know. Yeah, you know what? It's interesting because I was watching this bodybuilder guy online and he was like getting ready for a show and he's like cutting his calories and, and he's doing all this stuff. And every day he has to take pictures of himself and send it to his trainer, his, his yeah. coach, right? Yeah. And and the coach will give him. So even he, like he's an expert, right? He looks amazing, but even he has help, right? Yeah, absolutely. You're not, you don't have to do all this by yourself. So it, there's all these different like groups and communities to help you. You need to get involved in some of that and surround yourself with like-minded people. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So tip number nine, uh, Here's something we had to learn years ago was to get, to drink water at home. Lex used to be on juice boxes. Remember, yeah. like it was one juice box after another. This went on for years and I was always like, well, it's apple juice, but at the same time, it's not really the apples, it's just like sugar, right? And it, it took so, what happened was you got the Berkey water filter and we started, Tim bought the filter and then bought glass bottles and we started, and he bought like 20 of them. And we started filling the bottles with water and sticking them in the refrigerator, right? And every day, you know, every night he goes through this and every day we have 25, 30 bottles of water, 20 ounce bottles in the refrigerator, cold and ready to go. And then we just stopped buying 
soda, right? I was hooked on Diet Coke, remember that? Holy smoke, uh, Lex was on the juice. So now there's nothing in our house except for water. And and the reason we did that is because we want our house, house to be a safe place. If we go out to a restaurant, right, and we're going to a vegan restaurant or something, uh, we'll get soda and that's totally okay. Or tea. Or, or tea or whatever. But, you know, if we're eating at home, it's just bottled water. So. Make sure there's plenty of water in your house. Get everything else out. Yeah, I think setting yourself up that way is great. So we're, we like the taste of cold water. Yeah. So if that makes us successful, that's good. But, you know, can you criticize that and say, yes, it should be room temperature or your stomach handles and digest nutrients better if it's warm water? Yes, but set up something that works for you. Um, that works for us. But again, having it ready, uh, bottled and refreshing, that's what pulled us out of everything and to be able to do just the water, but. Well, and the, you know, the odd part about it is, I, well, you're at a restaurant, they give you, you know, hey, I'll have a Coke or a Pepsi, right? And they bring it to you and I don't realize, do you want a refill? Oh yeah, I'll take a refill. They refilled that thing four times, right? And at 250 calories per, per soda, that's a thousand calories of soda I just had in one sitting. Right? Yeah. Those are the days we took baby steps. Though. Holy you know, one, smoke. One change at a time. You start looking at things and you're like, it took me what am I doing? It took me so long to get up. And then I went to Diet Coke and that was just as bad. But you know, you might as well just have the Coke because at least it's sugar. Diet Coke has chemicals, right? So, I mean, in the end, there's no winner. You, you, don't, you can't win with either choice. You really just have to stop them both. Yep. So again, setting yourself up. It's almost like meal prep, right? Setting yourself up uh, to drink enough water in the day. Super important. All right, and then the last one is, uh, <laughs> this one drives me crazy. If you're, if you're a vegan, right, or even a vegetarian, stop listening to people who say, you need meat to get iron, you need meat to get protein, you need meat to get omega-3s. Oh my gosh, yeah. oh my gosh. So again, using chronometer and tracking your food for a bit so you, you get a visual, you get used to a visual of what you need to eat, it'll show you. I'm way above what I need for a day in iron. Yeah. And it's plant-based iron, which is even better for you. It's the non-heme the non the non iron. We've stuff, also yeah. learned where to put flaxseed as well in, in a stir fry or in a, in a smoothie right after workout or something. You can get it in and when it's tracked, you'll see I'm getting everything I need. So so one of the things to be aware of, like spinach and, and and leafy greens are full of iron, yeah. right? Which we kind of have learned to just incorporate in almost every meal. We put greens in smoothies and stir fries, like in everything I'm throwing greens in, right? Like if I eat cereal, I'm throwing in that. Really it wilts down yeah. and you don't even know it, but you've no. just added some benefits. So yeah, it's got pretty easy to do. But I've had kids in my class say, well, where are you gonna get your iron if you don't eat meat? I'm like, where your meat gets it from, greens. That's where that's where they get it from, right? The same thing with protein, like plant foods are, are there are plenty of foods loaded with protein. Um, the other thing is so many people will be like, well, if you don't eat fish, how are you getting your omega-3s, right? Well, and I, I just remind them, well, how do the fish get their omega-3s? Fish don't make omega-3s. They get it from the seaweed or the plants in the ocean. They store it in their fat. That's why they're loaded with omega-3s because fish are very fatty and they store it in their fat. Yeah. Right? So, sometimes when those questions come up, I just have to do a visual to myself of like how large an elephant is and a giraffe. Uh, some of the biggest animals yeah. eat plants. So anyway, just you know, if an, nice if an adult comes up to me and says something about omega-3s, I just let it go. But when it's, when it's a student, it's a, I'm there to teach, it's a different story. I'm like, let me tell you how this works, all right? <laughs> Sit down and let me give you an education on this. Because I just feel like if I don't change their mind right here, you know, no one's going to. All right, so those are our tips. 10 tips on how to help you live a more unprocessed uh, life, a more healthier life, how to lose some weight if you want how to argue with people who are not vegans about where you're getting your protein, all that stuff, right? Anything else you want to add? But I remember in the beginning, sometimes we were like, and people will to this day were like, what do you eat to oh, get protein or, or or no oil okay. in food? So I, it's like, I look like I'm dying of starvation, yeah, right? We have an extra refrigerator and freezer in the garage because there's so much food to eat. Like, I'm not, I'm, we're not starving, okay? You know, when you- Don't ask. <laughs> all right, that's our video for today. <laughs> hit, the, uh, hit the like button, show us some love. Uh, Hit the subscribe button, click on the bell, and you'll get notified every time we have a video, usually every Tuesday, and it also helps us uh, 
if you uh, like and subscribe with the uh, the algorithm for YouTube, leave a comment below. So, did you make a resolution this year, or are you are you committing to make some changes this year? And that's how I really feel like we should be talking about this. What changes are you trying to make, and what are gonna are your steps gonna be? What are you gonna do? Leave it below, below in the comments. Let us know. My world is changing every day, uh, and. Uh, I hope to have an amazing transformation video uh, in about six months, and I'll keep you updated on that. But everything I'm doing has changed, uh, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. All right, we'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>